Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish Podcast. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. This is my man, Do. There's a lot to get into this week. So let's talk about it because there's a lot of um excitement. And I'm about the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's just go there because they're first place. Yes. First place. So let's get into it. Is this... Is this an apparition or is this reality, this first place, this little hot, this hot streak that they were on? This hot streak they're on, they're in first place. Then they played the Dodgers this week. Mm-hmm. And we saw what happened with the Dodgers. Okay. What's your take on the Philadelphia Phillies going forward? This is my take. Fans, don't be scared to put your heart into it. I know people want to protect their heart because they feel as though, as you just saw, we just saw them against the Dodgers. So... We're not a championship caliber team. This is the way I look at it. You ever like go someplace and um, it's like a raffle, mm-hmm. you know, usually five numbers on the raffle ticket, and you like it's probably five hundred people in this raffle. Mm-hmm. So you say, I don't really got no chance to win this raffle, but I'm gonna support whatever cause it is and get a raffle ticket or two. Yeah. So I feel like I have a raffle ticket or two of the Phillies, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, it's usually five numbers, so they read off the first three numbers, and you look at your card and you like, oh. I might have a chance here. Yeah. And when you don't win it, it's like really no big deal. It's like, I never was going to win this raffle anyway. But yeah. I feel like you got those first three numbers, you get a little bit excited, like, and you start looking like, oh, what's the prizes? Like, you know, what, what can I win? Yeah. And then if it doesn't go your way, it's just kind of like, it's like so, a, a long shot to begin with anyway. So what you're kind of saying is the expectation right now and throughout the season, and we've mm-hmm. talked about it, how they're pretty much the same team every year. Mm-hmm. And... You know, what's happening with the Mets, what's happening with the Braves, the Phillies stumble around there in first. Yeah. So why not? Yeah, lightning in a bottle, I, sort of, I guess. But I, I say just enjoy the ride. Like, yeah. you're, it's like you're going somewhere you weren't expected to. You're getting something that you didn't expect. So enjoy it. Invest in it. And when it's over, hey, it's, it's like I wasn't expecting that. And if something great comes becomes of it, that's wonderful. And if something great doesn't become of it, then, you know, yeah. it's kind of what I expected anyway. I think that for me personally, like, I never got invested. I just watched it. And I'm like, well, you know, as a Phillies fan, I'm like, okay, this is really good. They're in first place. This is, mm-hmm. we might have a pennant race here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then here come the Dodgers. <laughs> and it's like, okay, here's reality. I think that was the slice of reality pie right there where it's like, you know what? I This isn't. Like you said, just enjoy what's happening right now mm-hmm. and, you know, almost be zen about it. Have no expectations, okay? Yeah. Because... But don't be afraid to to put your heart in is what I'm saying. Don't don't guard your heart. Like, go, like, expect them to win. Like, you know what? We can win this division. And even with the Dodgers thing, I mean, Nola was dealing. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can make a case Willer was dealing. So... Invest. Go, go. You know, you're looking at your ticket. You got a chance. Be excited. Playoff time. If they make the playoffs, you got Nola Wheeler. That's strong. That is strong. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just to piggyback on your point, but it's the Phillies. I have seen this believing. I got to see them go. We got to change that mindset. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens a week from now. We're playing Cincinnati right now as we speak. Let's go, Phils. So, we're talking about hope. Mm-hmm. Hope now with Philadelphia. When we started this podcast, hope wasn't very much. True. And now we have more hope. And I want to talk about Yellow Star Wars. I'm going to talk about a new hope. Okay. All right. We were talking about the Sixers. Okay. And how they're kind of stuck in the mud a little bit, but maybe they're not. Mm-hmm. See what's been happening in the summer camp? We saw what kind of happened in the playoffs. This young man, Tyrese Maxey. Mm-hmm. Okay, we know the Sixers kind of because of what happened with the pandemic. They got him where they probably wouldn't have got him if everything would have went the way things normally go. Okay, he would have been a lottery pick. This guy is showing something right now. Can he be that X factor next season, or is he still too young? I say yes. He can be that X factor next season. Um, and if they stay status quo and this is the team they bring back, I expect him to do big things. At, honestly, I think at some point during the season, he taps uh, Curry and says, I need that starting spot. And Curry comes off the bench. Um, Which makes the team better. Yes. I, I, I really believe like 
they may have something here in, in young Tyrese. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it goes back to when we said that Maury knows what he's doing. Yes. And, you know, like after the Hawks series, I'm just, you know, and we, we've talked about it. I'm like, the Sixers are done. Mm -hmm. They're done. They're stuck in the mud unless they bring in someone. But then when you think about, okay, well, they do have this kid. They yes. do have this kid who's not from this culture. And I call it the I'm good, I'm cool culture. Okay, mm -hmm. the whole process culture, and we talked about it before. We there weren't any veterans here to help the, the two stars yes. move forward. He's not from that. And he's from a winning program. He's we saw it in the Hawks playoff series. He's like, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get the lump in my throat. He, he that actually, Ben Simmons got. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, he his was, yearly. He was he was going throat. at Trey Young. It was just like you know, I'm just as good as Trey Young. Watching him play um, the other night in the summer league. You know who he kind of reminds me of a little bit? And Who's I, that? I don't want to be out of line, but I see a lot of John Morant. I see a lot of a, a lot of similarities where, yo, turn this kid loose. Yeah. You know, give him the ball. If you're going to come back, we've already come to the conclusion Ben can't have the ball 24-7. Yeah. So, like I said, if you come back status quo, you got to get this kid up, especially I would say in um, those first two months of the season up until Christmas. Get the kid the ball, and let's see what happens. If Maxi emerges, let's say hypothetically, if he really keeps coming on, mm -hmm. and you're at the trade deadline halfway through the, through the year, mm -hmm. do you just say the heck with it and you move Simmons to get some role players in and go for that title? No. 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 I'm, I'm not selling Ben Simmons for fifty seven. So you're staying on that, rattle, even, if Maxie's, no. even if Maxi's, even if Maxi is that scoring and fills in because the kid can play defense as well he's still got a long way to go but physically you can see where he can play defense once he gets more seasoning listen the key to anything in life is communication so i'm just hoping right now as we get closer to the season the season starts the sixers and ben communicate and they're able to get past this rift and in sports we know winning Cures our ills. Mm -hmm. So if they get Element out there, deodorant. yeah. So if 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 that guy, if Maxi is looking like the real deal, I think Ben will come around. I, I I think he wants to be part of a winner, and I think he wants to win here. But I just I just think his feelings was hurt, and I think because of the way he's been treated um, up until the end of last season, yeah, you know, it's um it's the spoiled child who now you saying you're trying to be stern with and they like what, what, what are you doing get where'd all this discipline and consequence yeah, so come from i think once they all get on the same page if he's not traded i honestly think that this can be fixed odds ben simmons is traded before the season starts i'm gonna say less than 50 percent and me personally the only way i'm trading them if if it's for lillard yeah, yeah. Other than that, then I think I let it play out a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. and patience in Philadelphia. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> so, speaking of that, and I wanted to get your take on this. Okay, we were talking about before before the cameras roll. We were talking about like Philadelphia in general, you mm -hmm. know, and the sports culture in Philadelphia. And I'm going to use Carson Wentz as an example. Okay, okay. Um, he came back this week. Um, when I look at Carson, and I want to get your take on this, mm -hmm. I'm seeing RG3's career right now. What's your reaction to that? Do you think I'm off? Do you think, what do you think? Like, I'm seeing, you know, like that breakthrough season, mm -hmm. injuries, a little bit of the ego checks in, and then now more injuries. And now he's trying to come back, and it's like, I, I can see the parallel. I, I can mm -hmm. see why how you could come to that conclusion. Um, I'm not ready to go there yet because it's like RG three fell off the cliff really fast. It was like he got hurt and he came back, and it it, it was we seen some glimpses from Carson, you know, since that breakthrough season. So I don't think right now I don't think people think it's a talent issue. Yeah, you know, so. He still has that going for him. I think this is the year where I think people really make their minds up one way or the other. I think he has one more year to sway, for lack of a better term, the voters, which way they think is was the breakout year, the aberration, or 
is that he does he had a potential to to do that going yeah. forward. And the reason why I bring up RG three is because physically, when the injury started kicking up in for RG three, mm-hmm. he could not do what he used to be able to do. So it's like at this point you gotta you gotta be a quarterback, and that wasn't his game. And a lot of Carson, Carson when he first came here, we joked him so he's like a crash test dummy. And you know a lot of it, the injuries start mounting up, and then there's the ego. A lot of what happened last year. Well, I'm, like I said, according to them, you know Frank Wright had a lot to do with Carson's success. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I said, I'm one of those people that's interested just to watch it and see because. Honestly, I'm undecided. I don't know if he's a top 10 talent or a bottom 10 talent. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I think this year is going to go a long way in determining that. And he's another high caliber. And this goes to my follow-up question. He's another high caliber athlete who's out of town. He's no longer in Philadelphia. And it comes back to, and for those who don't know Philadelphia culture, there's this adage Philadelphia chases athletes out of town. And I think we're going to kind of differ on this mm-hmm. a little bit, but I'm going to start with you. What's your take on that? Do you think it's a fact or do you think it's a myth that Philadelphia does chase athletes out of town, in particular prominent ones? It's an absolute fact. Um, for those old enough to remember, a famous quote from Mike Schmidt. And Philadelphia is the, uh, the, ag- the, the, the thrill of victory and the agony of reading about it the next day in the paper. This is what Mike Smith said yeah. about the Philadelphia media back in their mid-80s. This, it's like they're just, they don't stop. It's like, it's no break. It's just like, it's constant just badgering and badgering and badgering. It's like you don't give your star athletes a break. They don't want to hear it like Sports radio is huge in this city. And it's like 24-7 if it's a bad game until the next game. It's just such a negative pull on you. And I can imagine being an athlete. It's kind of like it's like an unneeded headache. It's like being in a relationship and it's extra stress being added for no reason. Use someone like, let's use someone like Nelson Aguilar as an example. Who, okay. by the way, Eagles fans, you wouldn't have a Super Bowl if it wasn't for him. Okay? Um... Look, watch the game again if you don't believe me. Um, every time the guy, like, we know where his psyche was. Mm-hmm. Then he gets his confidence going again. They end up winning the Super Bowl. They move him out of his position. Mm-hmm. Every time the guy drops a pass, every time the guy, that's you just hear this constant droning on, this emotional droning on. Just to go back with your point. Now, for me personally, though, I don't know if... I think the culture, and I'm going to be honest, I think the culture can be very toxic, especially in the um, electronic versus the print um, media in Philadelphia as much. And I think you have those that fan base that just predominantly, I think Philadelphia, there's a lot of sex in Philadelphia, if that makes sense. I think there's the electronic media group and there's that fan base that follows that electronic media group, and that's just negative soup. And then you have the print media group where they're a little bit more older, a little bit more rational. Um, I think you see that. So is it a myth? I think you got to look at every situation individually. I think it's happened in the past, but I don't think it's a blanket. Carson got himself out of town. Um, Someone like Carson got himself out of town. He just didn't want to be here. He didn't want to be here. Whatever happened last year, and the question with Carson for me personally is, dude, how do you handle adversity? Because that's your job, is handling adversity. I, I, I would say this, though. On, you know, on one hand, you brought up the Nelson Aguilar thing, and I feel like you're not allowing Carson Wentz to be treated that same way. Like, we, he had a bad year, and he's mm-hmm. gone. So one bad year, and he's out of here? Yeah. Like, how come we couldn't say, okay, let's figure out what happened last year. Let's see what we can do going forward. Why is it that... Okay, he's gone. Just like right now with Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to figure it out, not, you know, give up on a young promising athlete because I feel like these organizations, they listen to the loud noise. And it's these it's it's this it's this rabbit Philadelphia fan base that makes the most noise. And it's just like, oh, as you say, well, Carson Wentz had a bad year. He's got to go. Or, you know, mm-hmm. we find reasons to blame Carson Wentz or say, instead of just saying, look, let's sit down. Let's see what happened. It was a bad season. You're going to have a 15-year career. 
let's try to figure this out before we say, you know, let's let's open a bit into the you know the, the best trade offer. Yeah. And, and here we we don't do that. We just and then I guarantee you, this is what happens. If Carson Wentz has a great season, watch all the people. Now, whoa, why did we trade him? Trading. Why did we get you rid trading. of him? Yeah. You know, you're so <laughs> impatient. It, it happens here all the time. And, and if I was an athlete, I just be like, you, you, you just can't relax. It's like if you, if you're not having a great season or a great game, it's like the sky is falling. Yeah, and we were going to close this segment, but I got to go really quick. Really quick, I need to ask you this. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little okay. bit. Right now, word on the street is Ben Simmons wants out. Yes. Word on the streets was Carson wanted out. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what you're trying to say is that you think it's this culture that makes the athletes want out. Well, along with bad front offices also, too. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. let them off their hook Woo, because yeah, they it's... ultimately have the, the final say. I mean, Carson Wentz is under contract. You don't have to move him. Is he going to retire? Yeah. Is Ben Simmons going to retire? You, you you put the onus on them. Let, listen, mistakes happen. Things that's like communication is the key. You know, the, Doc Rivers give him an opportunity to say, listen, I shouldn't have said that at the press conference. Let's let you know, give and be the chance to say, you know what, I shouldn't have brought your name up in the press. I should have just talked about myself mm-hmm. and my game. These things happen. To sit there and say, does Ben have a right to to feel some type of way about that? I guess. Okay, yeah. that's fine. But you know. I'm pretty sure Ben has done things to people where if somebody's got mad at him and he would like an opportunity to say, you know what, I shouldn't have did that. Yeah. And so stop just saying, oh, let's get him out. Did he have a bad playoff? Absolutely. Nobody's denying that. But there's a lot of great players who've had bad playoffs. Mm-hmm. And you just don't you don't give away talent. You don't give away Period. talent. You don't. Because you never get it back. Mm-hmm. Look at the Charles Barkley trade back in the day. Mm-hmm. One thing I'll say, and then we're going to move on and close up. Philadelphia, you got to get out of your fields. You got to get out of your fields. <laughs> like that you got to get got to get out of your feelings and the Philadelphia sports culture is going to be way better for it. Stop trying to be like New York, okay? Or being self-conscious about New York, all right? Okay. So and we'll revisit this and give us your takes on that. How or we think we're off? Think we're on about that. So let's close with this. Well, speaking of Philadelphia, let's do a little fun thing to close the show. Okay. Let's go back in the day. Let's go back to when we were we lads, 80s, 90s. Mm. Growing up, who was your favorite athlete? Who was your favorite? Let, let's narrow mm. Let's talk about from the Philadelphia perspective overall really quick. Who would you say is your favorite? Um, I had two people who I really like. One was Eric Allen, cornerback for the Eagles. I was a huge Eric Allen fan. EA Sports. Yeah, I thought he should have. Should be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. If they win the Super Bowl, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, also, I was a huge Juan Samuel fan. I don't Sammy. know if people outside of Philadelphia market may know who he was, but he was a Dominican player for the Phillies. He's the fastest. And <laughs> one of the reasons I gravitated towards him because he was a dark-skinned player who, and for the Phillies, that you know, just a black player in general, that was you know, that's not that's unheard of. It been an anomaly. Yeah. So, times. and and he was one of the better players on the team. So I was a, a big Juan Samuel fan. Yeah, I love Sammy too. We were talking about that off camera though. Like, just don't throw that high fastball. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw that. High. <laughs> like, yeah. oh. But he had so much power mm. for his size. Yeah. yeah. You know who I like? Let's go obscure. My man was Luis Aguayo. Back in the day, because I was built like him, so. But I liked uh, you would go baseball. I always liked the like little stocky dudes because I could relate, like uh, little short stocky dudes. Um, I don't know if his family would have said him. <laughs> okay. I got a Louis Aguayo card. Look, I'm serious. Number eight, I still got a Louis Aguayo card. All right, but no, that's not my favorite. It's Reggie yeah. White. Like yeah. you know, just growing up, you know, and it's it's the same thing for me. Like you know, being being. Um, Young African American kid growing up in the hood, you know, mm. and you see somebody like Reggie White, and that's the thing. Like, you know, when you don't have a father, mm. you collect father figures mm. a lot of times, and just Reggie was somebody who was like, wow, okay, you know, just like wow, okay, yeah. you're the best on the field, and just character wise, you seem like a legit good dude. You know, will you be my dad? No, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but Reggie, I just love Reggie. Um, Barkley, because Barkley seemed like that cool uncle. 
Yeah. Who would get in trouble? And you'd be like, "Oh, come on, man!" Like, yeah. so Barkley, Barkley for me to this day, I love Charles. And, yeah, and we've Greg. been blessed with a lot of good characters in the city as far as our our sports uh, players. So, yeah, Minnesota defense that's that, that's a good one. Yeah, Reggie to this day, <laughs> Reggie ninety two, same birthday, December nineteenth. We got the same birthday. Nah, too. I looked it, it up. There it is. I looked it up. So. All right. Well, speaking of looking things up, we are done for this week. Hit us up on all social media platforms. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, follow, subscribe. We got some good stuff for you. We're giving you Philadelphia sports from a different perspective. Okay. So look us up on social media. We're everywhere. I get that question a lot. Where can we find you? Everywhere. That's where you can find us. Okay. Graham, Twitter. Thank you for everyone on Twitter who's liking, giving us feedback. And that's going to be it for this week, all right? So, we're closing once again. I'm the one and only Big Game Dan. It's my man, Do. We'll be back next time.